This is a brief demo of what's new in Custom Elements. Uh, this is available in Chrome Canary today, but first things first, you need to go to Chrome Flags, search for experimental WebKit features, and turn this uh, flag on. So just to get started for a little bit of background, the first demo is something that's been working in Chrome for a while. If we look at the page source here, we've got a script that creates a prototype object that extends HTML button elements prototype. It adds this method with, which pops up an alert. And then this is custom elements, this call to document.register with the tag name my dash button or sorry, with the custom element type name my dash button. And then here at the bottom of the document, we've got a button, an HTML button, but it has this is attribute my dash button, which means that when the parser creates this button, it will wire it up to the prototype, which has this my method method. And I put an on click attribute in here that says call the my method method of the event target. So we can see that run, and unsurprisingly, it pops up the alert. All right. So next, we've got a slightly tweaked version of this demo. If we look at the source, I've taken that script block and basically put it in a function, and now I've got this button called register that calls that, and will register the my button. And if we, everything else is the same as before, including the onclick handler. So now if I pop open the uh, JavaScript console, and actually let's just look at the elements panel. Here is this button. It has the is my button attribute. Go back to the console. If I click it now, you'll see I get an error because the button has no method called my method. And indeed, if I, if I poke at this guy in the inspector, there's the button, and uh, it's not an instance of my button. In fact, there's no my button defined. However, if I run this uh, register code here, and then do this again, you'll see that the prototype's been changed to point to the custom element prototype. And if I look at this object again, you'll see that it has the my method method on it. Uh, our functions run, so my buttons defined is zero. Uh, this, this button in the document is an instance of my button. Sorry, instance of my button. So that just shows you how uh, registration works. All right. This process of creating a custom element that doesn't have a definition and then changing it when the definition becomes available is called upgrade. So, oh, another thing to point out here that's interesting, I guess, is there's this other button in the document that does not have the is attribute. It's the register button itself. And if I look at this button, you'll see that it does not have the my method method because it's a different type. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about upgrade. There is another step that happens at upgrade, and that is the created callback. If I look at the source of this example, this is very similar, as you can see, except instead of a button, I'm just creating a prototype that points to HTML element or prototype. And now here, the argument to document.register, this servile element, is a tag name. Because we're using HTML element in the prototype chain, we can make our own tag name. And here in the document, I've got three of these servile elements with IDs, button, chambermaid, and manservant. But you'll see the prototype has this method called created callback, which changes the DOM of the element and also does some console.logging. So let's see that in action. You see here in the document, we've got our question marks 
in the document for each servile element. And then when I register and the definitions become available, you'll see that I was actually, that created callback ran. The text content got changed and you'll see there's these logs in the bottom of the document. All right. Let's talk briefly about styles. This is the source of uh, this demo, and you'll see I've got this empty style tag here. If I want to style a custom element, it's not hard. I can just uh, write its tag name and then style it however I like. So I might say these are inline blocks, inline block, and uh, I'm cribbing from some CSS I prepared earlier here. Padding, okay. All right, so now if I reload this, you'll see there's a bit of space around these and, and so on. There's also a feature of custom elements just for CSS that's called unresolved. And you can say colon unresolved pseudo class. And then you can write these uh, extra CSS properties. And these only apply before the definition is available before upgrade. So I'm giving these kind of an inert look. Everything's very gray. All right, so now let's try that. You'll see you know, it all looks gray, and then because the unresolved pseudo class is applying. And then when the registration happens, the unresolved pseudo class no longer applies and those borders go away. Well, that's neat, but typically what you want is you want to actually have some styles that apply to the custom element regardless of what state it's in. And we have those here, we just use the tag name. And then you want to have some styles that apply only when the definition isn't available yet, like maybe you want to display a spinner or make it look grayed out or something like that. So you can use colon unresolved. What if you want to do some different styling when the definition is available? Well, that's easy too. You can just use the uh, CSS not pseudo like this. So you can say not unresolved and you can style the resolved elements. So I'll give these a nice border, a nice green border and a different background. Okay. So let me reload that again. You'll see these are our unresolved styles. And when I register, they're all, they all become resolved. So, one thing that's new recently in the last canary or two is the actual timing of when the created callback runs and the unresolved pseudo class applies or not, and uh, when the prototype of your custom element changes. So, I'm going to go to the sources tab, I'll close the uh, console, and I'm going to put a breakpoint here in the created callback right at the end after it logs maybe. And I'll hit reload again. And now let's register this definition. And you'll see we're stopped in the debugger. The manservant element, its created callback is running. And you'll see that its unresolved pseudo class no longer applies and it's moved into the resolved styles. But the other two callbacks haven't run yet and so the pseudo class is still colon unresolved. So you can imagine if you want to tell if your document has any unresolved elements in it, you could do document.query select uh, unresolved. And if that returns anything, there are custom elements in the document that haven't been upgraded. All right, let's uh, step through this and you'll see that the second one runs and then the third one runs. All right. Let that finish. Back to the demos. So that was the created callback in the unresolved pseudo class. The next thing is uh, another callback called attribute changed. So let's view the source of this guy. Here you see instead of the created callback, we're using the attribute changed callback. This one takes three parameters, the name of the attribute you get the old value and the new value. And you'll see in this example what we call what I call the chatty element or the 
cross chatter. It does console.log and it also echoes its HTML into the document. And then I've got these text boxes here which will let us uh, set and remove attributes interactively. So let me pop open the console again so we can watch this guy run. So the element is sitting right here, but it has no it has no text content, so it's not displaying anything. But now I'm going to set the uh, foo attribute to the value bar. And you'll see that the attribute change callback is run and has stuffed this content into the DOM. And it's also logged this. So this is the ID of the element. And this was the name parameter, so the foo attribute. If the old value is null, it means the attribute's being added. And then this is the new value bar. And so maybe I'll add a second attribute like food apple. And I get another null to apple. But if I change an existing attribute, I'll change the food to banana, you'll see I get old and new values. And finally, you can remove attributes. So let's say I'm going to remove the foo attribute. You see you get a new value of null when an attribute's being removed. I guess another thing to point out is that there are lots of ways to modify attributes other than uh, set attribute or remove attribute. So if I get the chatter box and then I do something like uh, get the class list which reflects the class attribute and I say I want to toggle, I don't know, bar on the class list, you'll see I get a callback for the class attribute has been added with the value blah and then if I toggle another um, class like power you'll see I'm getting the string blah power which is the value of the class attribute. So that's the attribute change callback. Alright, so there's one last callback and that's for whether your custom element is in the document or not. So I guess we'll briefly look at the source of this guy. Um, let me inspect on them. Let's see. I have, I have the source in Emacs here. Okay. So I'm basically creating a prototype the same way. I've got a the callback is called enter document callback, and this thing logs that this element's been put in the document, and left document callback, and it logs that it's been taken out of the document. So here I'm creating a class called foot, x dash foot tag, and oh, this is kind of another way to instantiate a custom element. You don't have to use the HTML parser, you can just call the constructor that's returned from document.register. So here I'm creating a new foot and I'm setting the text content left foot. And then as before, I've got some buttons to drive the demo. One that appends this left element into the body and another one that removes the left element. All right, so let's, I guess, look at the console again. So you can press insert and it goes into the document, it says put your left foot in. You'll see if I append it again, it's already in the document and that does nothing. There's no callback. And then there's an example of a removed callback and it's gone. Let's insert it again. Uh, one other slight twist to this demo is that I I'm using a created callback as well here to add this shake class when you click on this element. So you can literally put your left foot in, put your left foot out, put your left foot in, and then shake it all about. So that's all uh, I wanted to show you. Thanks, this is in Chrome Canary. Try it out.